Hello and welcome to Fireflies Family Game Night. I'm Emily and I've got Faye joining us again this weekend. So thank you so much for joining us. As always, if you have any questions, please give us a shout out or uh, contact us through our Facebook or email or phone number. Um, but tonight we have a really special occasion. We have some real cool new games that came in from Haba. And we have the opportunity to show you one of these really cool games called Hammer Time. I don't know about you, but I really like using things that, you know, you get to bang on and make sounds with. So I'm really excited to see how we play this game. So, all right, Miss Faye, let's take a look at Hammer Time. Well, thank you, Miss Emily. So like she said, this is Hammer Time. It is a new hobby game. So this is actually the bottom of the box itself. When you first get it, you will need to put this little sticker on the back, but it is really sturdy so it can just stay there and it's perfectly fine. And then you put the gems on the top. So the card decks here, these are going to be the cart decks. Everyone is going to get them. They are different colors. This one is yellow, and there is four in each color. You're going to place them in a stack just like this, face up in front of each player. These cards are the request cards. On the back of them, they have this cute little white gem, and they have different requirements on the front here, and those are going to be placed face up next to the board. This die is for the advanced version of the game, which I will explain at the end. So on your turn, you are going to take this hammer. The first turn is going to be the youngest player, and they will start with this, the first player card. You're going to take the hammer, and you're going to decide which side of the box you want to tap on to make the gems fall. Now, you want to get gems that go in your little mine cart, or that complete this task card. Hopefully both if you can, that's not always possible. So you're going to take the hammer and you're going to gently tap on one side of the box or multiple sides just until some number of gems, oh looks like I only got one this time, until some number of gems comes off. So this gem, say we are playing this person here, well this gem is, the first thing we check are these cards, did I match these requirements? Now the list of requirements for these request cards is at the end. For this one, I needed to knock out six, seven, or eight gems. Well, I certainly didn't meet that, so I did not complete this request card. So it just stays right there. Now, if I'm playing this player, this gem does not help me at all. So I can't use it, because you have to match the color gems on your little sheet. So I'm gonna have to put it back. Now, these clear gems are special. These are like jokers, they're wild cards. You can use them for any spot on your card. Now, the thing about completing quest cards is, like I said, there's a clue gem on the back. If, say, I had knocked off these three jewels here, and I put them on my card, and I already had this quest card, I can choose to use this quest card as my completed jewel. I can only do that if I can't complete it any other way. So then, if a card is completed, you take the gems, you put them back on the pile, and you put it face down next to you. The first person to get all of their cards face down ends the game. What that means is everyone who hasn't taken a turn yet this round will get to finish out the round, take their turn, and then the game ends. The winner of the game is if only one person has completed their entire stack, whoever completed it. If multiple people have, it's whoever both completed their stack and has the most request cards. If you're playing with younger players or just want to try it a little bit simpler, you can actually take the request cards out for your first game. Now the advanced version is pretty similar to it, just like the original, but it has this special die. What you do is you, on your turn, you're going to roll this die and that's going to tell you how you have to use the hammer. Now it is written in the back of the book what the different colors mean. In this case, we have purple. Thump! Who needs a hammer? So instead of using the actual hammer, we're going to use our fist and we're just going to kind of tap on the box instead. <laughs> and each color does a different thing. Like one of them, you use the back of the hammer, you might have to do it with your eyes closed, with your head on the table, all kinds of fun things for a little bit more challenging of a game. Now, if you have really young players who have a hard time counting, then there is this nifty little thing on the sides of the box. I can't really pick the box up because there's gems on it, but I can show you on the instructions here. So there are these little gems on the side. Because if you knock off more than eight gems on your turn, I did not, so I didn't trigger this, 
Then you trigger the dragon, and you just have to end your turn. The way you can count this is those little eight gems line up perfectly. There are eight of them. So you could always just line them up right there beside them. And if you have less than the number of gems on the side, then you're perfectly fine and you get to continue with your turn. But if you knocked off more than that, oh no, you woke up the dragon and you have to put the gems back and your turn is over. That is in all versions of the game, whether it be the simplest, the normal one, or the advanced version. So it's just a helpful little thing for younger players. And that is how you play Hammer Time. Well, thank you so much, Miss Faye, for explaining Hammer Time from Mojave USA. I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited to actually get to play this game myself. So you need to come by and grab a copy. By the way, guys, we are getting close to Christmas, so we can get some Christmas shopping, and we do have free wrapping here at the store. So um, come out and get your Christmas shopping done. Check out some of these new Hobbit games. We've got some more on a display for you. Come on out and check those out. Until then, I hope you all have a great weekend, and we look forward to seeing you next time for our family game night. Bye.